The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Everyone, thanks for joining us for the February public meeting. I'm Linda Muma, a public information officer with CalRecycle. Today's live update is designed to serve Californians with accessible, inclusive, and plain language information about CalRecycle programs, actions, and priorities. We welcome your feedback as we continue to improve our public meetings. Before we get started this morning, a quick mention to those who may want to uh, submit a question and comment uh, during the public comment period um, to uh, head to the agenda. You can find that on the public comments portal. Just go to the uh, Calvary Cycle homepage from the top menu bar, select get involved. And then in the text near the bottom of the page, click public comment portal and then from the drop down menu select the first option monthly public meeting to submit your question and comment and we'll address those submissions during the public uh, comment period coming up a little bit later the first item on our agenda this morning is the director's report director rachel Mocky wagner joins us now with some information for us this morning good morning rachel Good morning, Linda. Thank you so much for kicking us off this morning. And good morning to all of you and welcome to our February public meeting. Uh, today, we are pleased to bring to you some updates on some of the important work that we're doing. But first and foremost, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things um, to kick off the meeting. One, I wanted to share how incredibly um, proud we are to be well more than 60% done with our debris operation for the 2021 uh, fire incidents of this fall. Um, it has been a lot of work and we are incredibly uh, pleased to share that we are 60% done with the structural removal and well on our way to getting trees removed so that these communities can restore and rebuild uh, as quickly as possible. And we will bring you more information in March about how our debris operations are going and um, further progress report. Um, I also wanted to highlight this morning um, what an incredible um, uh, process the SB 619 implementation and the SB 1383 uh, implementation has been since the beginning of the year. We are starting to see applications for notice of intent to, uh, to comply under SB 619 flow into the department um, over the last uh, few weeks. And I have just wanted to highlight how incredibly impressed I am with the partnership that we are building between CalRecycle and our local government partners. I have really appreciated the very, very constructive comments and questions that have come forward during our webinars and a lot of the work that our staff are doing, they're working very hard to make sure that our local partners have the tools that they need to implement this critical, critical piece of legislation um, and a really successful organic waste recycling, um, collection recycling and reuse program. And so thank you to all of our local partners who have been a part of those conversations, who are working towards compliance with 1383, who are working through the 619 process um, and really excited to see what the coming year brings in terms of really building out that partnership and together building a very, very successful program. The nation and the world are watching us. They are looking to see if this is something that can be done. And so far, what I'm seeing is a real, not only willingness, but eagerness to be a part of the solution. So thank you to our, our local partners. That deadline for application under 619 for the application of a notice of intent to comply is March 1st. So if you are uh, representing a local government that is working through this process, please make sure you get that application in by March 1st and make sure your applications are complete. We've seen a few come in 
um, where the uh, the um, uh, application was missing some information or um, the resolution did not match our template. So really encouraging, if you have any questions about that application, let's make sure that you get those answered um, very quickly so we, we can approve your application and work with you on overall compliance. Um, still under the heading of 1383, also very excited to announce that our grant applications are coming in very, very strong. As we announced earlier uh, this year and last year, our food recovery grants went out in December, that $5 million went out. We are getting ready to award um, or in the process of awarding um, our, or, our uh, co-digestion grants um, and uh, really exciting projects as part of that grant cycle as well that is going to just to be really world changing in my mind and our local assistance grants are getting ready to go out as well and really again showing and highlighting that uh, partnership between us and our local partners uh, we received I think it's uh, over 480 applications for that grant assistance so very excited at how much engagement we have from our local partners, our nonprofit partners, our private partners on implementation of 1383 and just have a great deal of optimism about our success because of the partnerships we're building. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you for your participation in this incredibly important um, legislation, this incredibly important program. We are building something that is gonna change the world. I truly, truly believe that and can't thank you all enough for your very constructive and serious engagement in that process. And uh, last but not least, I wanted to bring up our public meetings. Here we are today, um, still over a, a uh, Zoom format after several years. Um, and I think and hope that what that has done is brought more people to our public meetings, but we are looking for opportunities to more fully engage with our communities, with our stakeholders. and so. I really want to encourage uh, comments here about the public meeting, things that you would like to see that would uh, bring more useful information or um, that would help us engage with local communities more directly. So if you have those comments, we would like to hear those as well as we are continuing to try to improve um, not only our outreach, but our engagement. So with that, Linda, thank you so much. Um, the theme of today is thank you for all of your partnership and as we can continue on this important endeavor of uh, building the circular economy for California, I look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thanks, Linda. Fantastic. Thank you, Rachel. Now to an update on the biggest change to California's trash since we started recycling in the 1980s. Statewide requirements for food and yard waste recycling and surplus food recovery took effect on January 1st to help California cut landfill climate emissions. Policy Director Zoe Heller joins us now. Good morning, Zoe. Good morning, Linda. To echo some of Director Wagner's remarks, CalRecycle is seeing progress throughout the state with the rollout of 1383. We're seeing new collection programs and the passage of new ordinances in California. As a reminder, jurisdictions that need more time to fully implement their food and yard waste recycling programs have options. As Director Wagner mentioned, applications, um, oh, sorry, as um, Director Wagner mentioned, applications and CalRecycle approved waivers for rural, low population, high, high elevation jurisdictions are posted on our website. Approved waivers can exempt cities and counties from some collection requirements for a period of time. SB 619 offers another pathway to compliance. Another reminder that jurisdictions can submit a notice of intent to comply with SB 1383 requirements to CalRecycle by March 1st, so coming up just around the corner. This will allow you additional time to comply without facing penalties in 2022 if the jurisdiction implements the compliance actions proposed in their notification. And a quick update about state and financial assistance for local organics recycling and surplus food recovery efforts, CalRecycle received 475 applications for our local grant program to assist jurisdic jurisdictions with implementation of SB 1383. We will be announcing those grant awards at a future monthly meeting and are very excited about it. Matt Hennigan has an update on additional circular economy investments coming up in just a few minutes. 
As a reminder, we're continually updating and adding information and resources to our short-lived climate pollutant website. To ensure you're notified of, of the latest updates, please sign up for our SLCP listserv. Also, continue to reach out to CalRecycle for any technical assistance regarding SB 1383. We're available for meetings and presentations and just to answer any questions that you have. Great, thanks so much, Zoe. Uh, you just mentioned that some of CalRecycle funding available to help support Senate Bill 1383 implementation, which includes money for compost and anaerobic digestion facilities. Watch how these public and private partnerships help California fight climate change. New food and yard waste recycling programs help communities take on the climate crisis by transforming our trash into valuable green products. We sell out every year. I don't, we, we can't make enough compost to, to, to serve the valley right now. Partnering with local governments, businesses, and nonprofits, California's new circular economy investments will pump $270 million into local economies to help grow green industries cutting landfill methane emissions, and revitalizing our communities by giving food, yard, and other organic waste its next life, with $5 million in new community composting for Green Spaces grants. It's great to get outside and work with people in your community who are interested in the same things that you are, and fighting climate change is a great goal for all of us. Prior grant recipients added 110 community composting sites to keep 225 tons of organic waste out of our landfills to date, creating 22 jobs, cutting climate pollution, and providing hundreds of pounds of locally grown produce to California communities. From as far north as Klamath to as far south as San Diego, community composting really offers us that opportunity to get out there and do our part. Another $20 million in new funding will help upgrade our wastewater treatment plants to turn more local waste into renewable energy to power homes, businesses, and vehicle fleets. Being able to use co-digestion is a great advantage for California because it's existing infrastructure that's already built and we can tap into that. And $165 million in new investments will go to more compost and anaerobic digestion facilities, equipment, staff, and support for local recycling programs, adding to the $100 million awarded to 38 local compost and biofuel projects that will keep over 2.7 million tons of organic waste from creating methane in landfills, Cutting climate pollution equal to taking a quarter million cars off the road for a year while supporting green industries. Anytime we divert organic waste out of landfills, we're going to be able to create jobs within the local communities. These new partnerships and new investments will support California's move to a cleaner, more circular economy, replacing dirty energy with renewable biofuels and boosting climate resilience through earth cleansing compost that nourishes our crops, keeps more water in our soil, and helps pull more planet warming carbon out of the atmosphere. And today, CalRecycle is announcing $31 million in circular economy funding for 12 compost and anaerobic digestion projects across the state. Deputy Director Matt Hennigan joins us now with more on those projects. Good morning, Matt. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for that great video. Um, right, so as Linda mentioned, we're announcing awards for 12 organic pro uh, waste compo uh, processing facilities. Um, these 12 projects will recycle half a million tons of organic waste into products like compost and biofuel. Um, this $31 million uh, is part of the circular economy budget package that was passed last year. Uh, you can see here we have eight composting projects receiving a total of $22 million and three anaerobic digestion pro projects receiving $9 million. And um, these are all fantastic projects. I encourage you to read the, uh, the RFA that's linked to the agenda today for details on all of them. I wanted to, just to, to pull one out to mention um, and give some ex examples. The city of Sunnyvale is using its grant funds to buy a food depackager and an optical sorter. Uh, those uh, th that's going to allow them to recycle materials that otherwise would have been landfilled and turn them into compost and energy. Uh, the depackager is going to allow them to capture more food waste 
to go to an anaerobic digester, and that sorter will be able to pull out more food soiled paper from their waste stream and allow it to be composted. Uh, the project is going to cut uh, landfill methane emissions, but it's also going to reduce truck travel and garbage truck trips by 12,500 miles worth every year. So there's a lot of ways we're saving greenhouse gases and emissions with these projects. Um, the awarded applicants to, that are being awarded today uh, applied during our previous organic grant program cycle. Uh, they all received a passing score but we're not able to be funded due to insufficient funding availability. Um, so the 2021-2022 uh, the, the funds uh, and also the 2022-2023, those budget years provided new funding, so we're able to partner with these entities on these projects. Um, this the action is delegated to me and I've already approved it. Um, and again, I encourage you to read the detailed project summaries. Um, because there, you know, it's it's great strides being uh, made to get our infrastructure in place to be ready for full implementation of SB 1383. Uh, the um, the remaining funds that were not allocated this time will be added to a 70 million dollar budget item in the greenhouse gas reduction fund uh, organics allocation, which is part of that larger circular economy infrastructure funding that we talked about earlier, and that. Um, that money, that 70 million, will be issued as part of a grant, uh, the criteria of which you can expect to see in the fall. So um, I, I'm thankful to the, to the team for getting this money out and working for the people of California recycling organic waste um, and more to come to support the um, organics processing infrastructure this fall. Um, now we are working hard to get these circular economy investments into our communities as quickly as possible. The first round of surplus food recovery grant awards will be announced very soon. And in April, we expect to uh, award the first round of the SB 1383 local assistance grants. Um, last month, we presented criteria and a process for, uh, for, for scoring the co-digestion grant program. Uh, we received inquiries during the two-week comment period uh, that mostly requested clarity on eligible project types, eligible costs, uh, various feedstock types that are eligible, and we have used those comments to inform some revisions to the RFA that include allowing two applic applicants per qualifying entity, um, so for large jurisdictions, maybe they have two projects. Um, a one-year extension on the grant term and allowing projects above the $4 million cap to be considered if there are too few qualifying applicants. Uh, I've already approved those revisions. Thank you to the people who reached out uh, with suggestions. Uh, and if you have additional questions, there are more opportunities for clarification through our formal question and answer process uh, when the application is released for the co-digestion grants, and that's in just a few weeks. Um, the next item on our agenda is a tire item. Uh, a project in Los Angeles will use 284,000 waste tires to reduce vibration and noise from a newly constructed uh, Metro Gold Line extension through Foothill communities on Los Angeles. Uh, we have that as well as another ag tire related agenda item. But first we wanna remind everyone uh, about why the, how these tire programs came to be with this short video. Thanks again, Linda. California produces more, produces than, 51 more than 51 million waste, million waste tires, tires, a, tires year. a year. Up until a few, until decades, a few ago, decades ago, piles of piles illegally, of illegally dumped, dumped tires polluted tires our polluted state, our sometimes, sometimes catching fire, fire burning, deep, burning inside deep inside the pile. Because tires have because such tires a low conductivity, low conductivity. Uh, once a tire gets hot enough to burn, it's, it's actually pretty hard to cool down. In 1998, an employee clearing weeds at a property illegally storing about 7 million tires in San Joaquin County sparked one of the largest tire fires in our nation's history. Large plumes of toxic black smoke from the Tracy Tire Fire released dangerous chemicals like cyanide and carbon monoxide while it burned for more than two years. It was really a wake-up call for California that something had to be done. After several more massive tire fires, California turned to waste tire management and recycling. 
strengthening the decade-old Tire Recycling Act in 2000 to put waste tires to better use. Cal Recycle's role is to find new ways to recycle tires to prevent them from being either illegally dumped or, or thrown into a landfill. California now tracks the storage and movement of used tires and supports recycling and market development to encourage the use of products made from recycled tires. Cal Recycle promotes lots of tire derived products, but we have a pretty extensive catalog online that shows uh, everything that a waste tire can become. Cal Recycle's Tire Incentive Program provides financial incentives to eligible manufacturers that make new products from old tires. Two of the products that my team promotes uh, include rubberized asphalt concrete and tire derived aggregate. TDA, used as vibration mitigation under light rail, has saved the state millions of dollars while it absorbs sound and allows for a smoother ride through neighborhoods. When you use TDA, you're actually solving engineering problems. Rubberized asphalt concrete blends recycled tires and asphalt to create a more cost-effective, durable, and environmentally friendly alternative to traditional paving materials. Other tire-derived products use ground-up recycled tires mixed with other materials to create products like flooring, roofing, traffic control devices, and pathways. In a lot of ways, waste tire products outperform conventional materials, but using tires can often save money as well. In 2019, these innovative solutions help California recycle more than 19 million waste tires, or about 37% into new recycled products. California has made great strides in finding better uses for tires, but with 42% or 21.5 million tires being burned for tire-derived fuel either within the state or shipped overseas primarily to Asia, and more than 9 million tires still buried in landfills every year. We still have a lot of work to do. There's more work on the road ahead. Thank you for that uh, that great video. I always love that entire video. Um, so the, the award today uh, is for the Metro Gold Line Foothill Extension Construction Authority, which will receive $300,000 in our tire-derived aggregate grant program. Uh, and they were the lone applicant this grant cycle. So um, if you are, are doing a public works project, um, consider uh, applying for this. Uh, the award is for the new phase of light rail extension project, uh, that, and it will reduce vibration impacts and noise impacts in Pomona neighborhood, in Pomona and other neighborhoods located near the tracks. Uh, about 2,800 tons of TDA material, uh, the equivalent of 28,000 waste tires will absorb and buffer the community impacts of this new transit infrastructure project. Um, Cal Recycle uh, was able to get some video of some of the key players on this project, and here's what they have to say about it. For vibration mitigation under the light rail tracks, places where people are very close, where neighborhoods are close to the right of way. Well, just think of tires. They put tires on a car because they are um, a, they're, they soften up the ride, and so the TDA is doing the same thing for a train. So it's not uh, shaking your walls and your ground around the tracks. This material is first discarded from its original use, and so people tend to think that therefore it has no value. They call it a waste, but actually it gets turned into a very valuable material with really beneficial properties. I think it is a good thing for the environment and I think it's it's cost effective and it has engineering properties that are better than other materials. So true, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, so to date, this tire drive aggregate grant program has kept over 43,000 tons of waste tires out of landfill by promoting TDA as a cost-effective alternative to con conventional materials in various civil engineering applications. If your local government is doing stormwater infiltration galleries, landslide repair, or other public works that need lightweight aggregate, this program covers the cost of the aggregate as well as the associated engineering. So please contact us for more information. That is a great deal for local governments. Um, now, the other tire item we have on the agenda today is uh, we're presenting criteria and the evaluation process for the Waste Tire Cleanup Grant Program. Uh, our five-year tire plan allocates $1.25 million to help local 
governments clean up illegally dumped waste tires. Uh, this is open to local governments as well as special districts, qualifying tribes, and joint power authorities. They're all eligible. Um, staff has proposed one criteria change from the last cycle. Um, the revision of rank one criteria will include existing tire pile sites that are located within the southern border regions uh, within San Diego and Imperial County. And this change will allow the um, jurisdictions or tribes or entities receiving grant funds to conduct uh, cleanup on both sides of the border. If, if, uh, if they so desire, that will be considered an eligible expense for those, uh, those receiving funds. This gives California communities that are disproportionately burdened by pollution priority over other applicants. Um, and, um, and we're gonna be using the Cal Screen 4.0 tool to identify disadvantaged communities when we're evaluating uh, grant applications. The applications uh, will be available in March with an April submission deadline, and we're expecting to make awards in August. Um, and speaking of applications, the one cycle we have open right now for grants is our zone incentive funds. Uh, so the recycling market development zones use these funds for um, promoting uh, recycling manufacturing in their zone. Uh, applications are due March 1st. It's a fairly simple application, so get started and finish up by March 1st. Um, and keep in mind that our greenhouse gas reduction loans and our RMDZ, the Re Recycling Market Development Zones, those loan programs are always available and continuously taking applications. So for recycling uh, manufacturers, uh, we would love to help you finance equipment and expansion, uh, and new, new product lines, things like that. Uh, so be sure to visit our funding page on our website for a comprehensive list of various grant and loan programs. Um, next up, I believe Linda's going to be talking about our pharmaceuticals and SHARP plan. Yeah, um, and actually um, we'll head over to Zoe in just a second, but um, the, uh, now to an update on California's statewide pharmaceutical and SHARPs program. As you mentioned, the new extended producer responsibility requirements are designed to make it easier for consumers to safely manage their unwanted medication and home-generated SHARPs waste. Deputy Director Zoe Heller is back now with information on two new stewardship plans for Cal Recycles consideration. Zoe. Thanks so much, Linda. The next two items represent the fourth and fifth stewardship plans received for the new statewide EPR program. We presented the first two stewardship plans in December and a third in January. Stewardship programs for covered drugs must establish collection receptacles for consumers to take their unwanted medication with an option for mailing back some unwanted medication in some circumstances. Stewardship programs for home generated sharps waste allow consumers to mail back used or unwanted sharps waste in a secure sharps mailback container. These programs must be no cost to the consumer. The Drug Take Back Solutions Foundation is a program operator representing nine covered entities and it submitted its proposed stewardship plans for covered drugs and home generated sharps waste to CalRecycle on November 19th, 2021. CalRecycle found the plans to be complete on December 20th. Upon review, staff determined the foundation's proposed stewardship plans were substantially compliant with the statutory and regulatory requirements. However, several components do require additional information from and actions by the foundation. Therefore, staff recommends conditional approval of the foundation's stewardship plans for the director's consideration. Approval of each plan is contingent upon, one, the foundation providing letters within 30 days committing to revise and resubmit its plans, and two, that the foundation revising and submitting its plans to meet the conditions in these requests for approvals within 90 days. Today's agenda provides links to the public notice pages containing these requests for approval. If conditionally approved, the foundation may begin implementing its programs. Full implementation is required within 270 days of plan approval. Once again, we'd like to thank everyone who engaged in the public comment period in November and December. We got helpful comments from industry and nonprofit groups. CalRecycle appreciates the continued feedback during the development of these new programs. Please subscribe to CalRecycle's Pharmaceutical and Sharps listserv to receive um, your most up-to-date updates. Thank you. 
Great. Thanks so much, Zoe. As a reminder, if you'd like to submit a question or a comment on an agenda item to please do so through the public comments portal. You can see the instructions here on your screen from the Cal Recycle homepage, select public meeting in the text, click on public meeting portal, and then in the drop down menu, select monthly public meeting. Please keep your submissions brief and make sure to indicate which agenda item you are addressing so that we can direct them to the correct person during the public comment period coming up a little bit later. Now for an update on California's statewide I Recycle Smart campaign. Communications Director Maria West joins us now this morning with more on that campaign. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Linda. Thank you so much. So the first wave of Cal Recycle, the new I Recycle Smart education and outreach campaign rolled out statewide with ads on bus tail, shopping carts, and radio stations. Today we're announcing a new upgraded website for that campaign since the ad campaign is directing people to our new website. And we have some really exciting, completely first time things to uh, announce as well. So to make this easier in this uh, platform, we've created a video that will help you understand our, our new website, what our thinking is, and also to debut two of our video ads. Start on the new iRecycle.com website and we have more changes coming you can see we've got an empty and dry section a what can i recycle section we have buttons for how to recycle different important recyclable items and we have a video section that will be upgraded with a couple more videos this week and will change at times and then you can go to our empty and dry section or our what what can i recycle section which is the first time we've had a statewide place where you can see all the items that are recyclable across the state what are the specific items to take to collection sites and then what are items that you have to check your local program for? And we even have this section, which is about what you can't recycle at all anywhere in the state. And then the part that we are the most excited about is the find your local recycling information portion of the website. This is the very first time that California has provided one place where you can go to find your local programs. You just go at this point and you look up the letter of your city or if you're in an unincorporated portion, your county, and say if you're in the city of Sacramento, you can look here or the unincorporated part of Sacramento County, you can look right here. You click on that button and you go over to immediately to their website and you can see what's recyclable locally. The final page is our jurisdiction toolkits page. We have digital displays, we have social media assets, we have audio, which means radio ads, we have print assets like door hangers and bill stuffers, we have out of home, which includes bus tails and shopping cart ads, and then we have video ads that are coming very soon in the next week. I just want to give you a quick sneak peek at a couple of those ads. We have so much variety in, in the recycling program statewide that we really wanted to focus on something we could say statewide and determine that empty and dry was the best thing to focus on in our statewide advertising, but highlighting our website as a place to go to find more information. One thing that I want to point out before I show the ads is that it's really important to keep in mind that in advertising, it's very difficult to stand out. People will not taking your message or remember your message if you don't get their attention to begin with we needed ads that would stand out be different entertaining in all of these ads we use the i do my part i recycle smart model and we use turner the turtle he's appearing to bring to mind the pride californians have in our environment the connection that we have to animals like Turner and our concern for wanting to protect our children and the environment. Turner represents all turtles, river, lake turtles, land turtles, and desert tortoises, as well as the coastal sea turtles that are so often thought of when we think about pollution in our environment. So here's a really short ad that's designed to play right before your YouTube video. Dry recycling helps save our planet. Do your part. Recycle smart.
In the 30 second ad, you'll see we worked really hard to create a jingle that would be fun and memorable and stick in your head. And we also really wanted to highlight some of the fun dancing that's going on in places like TikTok with a lot of people joining in. And we wanted to be as inclusive as possible and create connection and just really highlight the sense of joy that we heard so many Californians express that they had about doing their part to recycle. For more tips on proper recycling, visit iRecycleSmart.com. Do your part. Recycle smart. I don't know if that was just glitching on my end or everybody saw that. Uh, for me, the the ads uh, sort of st stopped for a minute. So I'm hoping everybody else was able to see them. If not, they will be available on our YouTube page soon, as well as the toolkit on iRecycleSmart.com. So thank you so much for all the feedback that we've been getting. We will be able to, as I said, add some additional video and uh, really change things up as, as well as, as we roll out the organics recycling portion of the campaign, we'll add that to the website with its own pages as well. So we really encourage cities and counties, all the jurisdictions to keep your own web pages updated. Let us know if there's a, a, a better link or there's a better way for us to communicate this, but we are just trying to serve the entire state with the variety that we have throughout the state and make sure that we make it as easy as possible for Californians to find the recycling information they need in order to recycle smarter. Thank you so much. And back to Linda. Thank you, Maria. And no problem on the video. I think um, it may have just been on your end because it was it was clear here. So we're good to go. Uh, meeting California's climate and waste reduction goals would not be possible without the hard work of our cities and our counties. They're responsible for implementing the local programs to use less, recycle more, and meet state environmental protection standards. CalRecycle is responsible for overseeing how well jurisdictions are implementing these programs. Staff does this by conducting site visits, analyzing documentation, and through reviews of jurisdictions annual reports, which include disposal information and self-assessment of their programs. CalRecycle conducts more intensive jurisdictional reviews every two or four years, depending on the jurisdiction's past performance. The department also has the authority to conduct any time reviews to make sure that cities and counties are in compliance with mandatory commercial recycling and mandatory commercial organics recycling requirements. Deputy Director Matt Hennigan is back now with results of CalRecycle's latest compliance reviews. Matt. Thank you, Linda, and thank you for highlighting the hard work of local jurisdictions. We could not meet our, our collective goals without them. Um, and for the most part, cities and counties across California are implementing very robust commercial recycling and commercial organics recycling programs. Uh, those programs are required as part of AB 341 and AB 1826. And, and through our annual review process, the local assistance and market development branch staff did identify implementation gaps at, for programs in 16 jurisdictions. And th so those jurisdictions are, are detailed in, uh, and linked to the agenda. Uh, they're the cities of Chico, Del Mar, Encinitas, Escondido, Imperial Beach, La Mesa, Oroville, Manteca, National City, Palm Desert, Placerville, Poway, San Marcos, Solana Beach, Vista, and unincorporated El Dorado County. Uh, the most common gaps that were found were high levels of non-compliance from regulated businesses. That means they're not recycling when they, they need, they're regulated and need to be. And um, a lack of demonstration that this, the jurisdictions are actively providing commercial organic recycling collection and services to all their cover generators. Um, again, you can find summaries of these program gaps and an, inter and an overview of how each of the 16 jurisdictions plans to address those gaps linked in today's agenda. And some of those local solutions that, um, that they're committing to are uh, passing ordinances, 
that specify that recycling collection is a mandatory service and includes enforcement to make sure that businesses are receiving that service. Uh, site visits to help generators transition to mandatory service and also to right size their bins to, 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 to minimize costs. Uh, providing mandatory collection service to all covered gener generators or issue them waivers in the case that they, they don't need to, uh, to th that they're eligible for one. And to provide education and outreach to non-compliant generators. Uh, staff in the LAMD branch will closely monitor these programs over the next six months and jurisdictions that fail to make adequate progress may be referred to our jurisdiction compliance unit for further investigation. Um, and this item is delegated to me for signing. Um, a few more items of note uh, that you can also find on the agenda today. CalRecycle is required to review and approve or disapprove each countywide or regional agency integrated waste management plan five-year review report. Yolo County and Amador County submitted a five-year review report that concludes that no revisions to the planning documents are necessary and at, at this time, and our staff has concurred with that conclusion. So uh, detailed information on all of those items is on today's agenda. Uh, go to our homepage, click Get Involved, and then Public Meetings to download today's meeting agenda. Back to you, Linda. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, now moving on to our pending solid waste and tire facilities permits. Check out this quick video to see how California facility standards help keep our communities safe. Protecting the health of Californians and their land, food, water, and air is a big job. Local, state, and federal agencies play different roles to enforce public health and environmental safety standards. In California, solid waste local enforcement agencies process applications, issue, and enforce permits for solid waste facilities. These include landfills, transfer stations, compost facilities, or similar operations. CalRecycle must verify permits are consistent with state requirements. Permits can only address areas within the authority of local enforcement agencies and CalRecycle. Check out the link below for more detailed information. Emergency waivers allow temporary changes to solid waste permit requirements in response to local or state disasters. Local enforcement agencies may approve the waivers, which are good for up to 120 days and may be extended. CalRecycle must review approved waivers and can condition, limit, suspend, or terminate them. Check out the link for more detailed information. For waste tire facilities, CalRecycle processes applications, issues, and enforces waste tire permits. These include requirements to make sure tires are stored and processed in a way that reduces potential threats from fire and disease-carrying vectors like mosquitoes. Check out the link for more detailed information. CalRecycle is committed to protecting public health and safety by ensuring that California's waste regulations are followed. Branch Chief Paulina Lawrence joins us now with a statewide update on facility permits. Good morning, Paulina. Good morning, Linda. First off, I'd like to start with those solid waste facilities permit that the department has either issued or concurred on since last um, public meeting. Uh, on February 4th, 2022, the department concurred on a new solid waste facilities permit for direct disposal material recovery facility and transfer station located in Los Angeles County. Action was needed February 5th, 2022. Continuing on the agenda are Santa Maria Regional Landfill located at 2065 East Main Street in Santa Maria, which is in Santa Barbara County. This is a revised solid waste facilities permit Action is needed March 4th, 2022. Also, Western El Dorado Recovery Systems and Materials Recovery Facility, located at 4100 Farida Way in Placerville. This is in El Dorado County. It's a revised solid waste facilities permit. Action is needed February 27th, 2022. Also continuing is Mesquite Regional Landfill, located at 6330 East Highway 78 in Raleigh. This is in Imperial County. It's a modified solid waste facilities permit. Action is needed February 27, 2022. 
Next is Sierra Waste Recycling and Transfer Station, located at 8260 Berry Avenue in Sacramento, in Sacramento County. This is a modified solid waste facilities permit. Action is needed March 8th, 2022. New to the agenda is Borrego Landfill. This facility is located at 2449 Palm Canyon Road in Borrego Springs, which is in San Diego County. This is a modified solid waste facilities permit. Action is needed March 21st, 2022. Preliminary review of the permit package indicates the following proposed changes. Update to the assessor parcel number, update to the estimated closure due date from 2046 to April 2046, update of the owner address and incorporation of an updated joint technical document. New to the agenda is pre-zero U.S. Plastics Recycling Facility located at 4388 Serrano Drive in Mira Loma. This is in Riverside, California, uh, excuse me, Riverside County. It's a new solid waste facilities permit. Action is needed April 8th, 2022. Preliminary review of the permit package indicates the following proposed design parameters. The proposed facility will be a large volume transfer processing facility that will receive polypropylene and high density polyethylene plastics. Permitted hours of operations will be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Permitted maximum tonnage will be 200 tons per day. The permitted traffic volume will be 72 vehicles per day with the permitted acreage of 6.3 acres and then the design, design capacity of 500 tons per day. Next up, we have McCourtney Road Transfer Station, which is located at 14741 Wolf Mountain Road in Grass Valley. This is in Nevada County. It's a revised solid waste facilities permit. Action is needed by March 25th, 2022. Preliminary review of the permit package indicates the following proposed changes. An increase to the maximum permitted daily tonnage from 350 tons per day to 1,675 tons per day. An increase to the permitted area from seven acres to 12 acres. An increase to the maximum traffic volume from 1,090 vehicles per day to 1,658 vehicles per day. An increase in the days and hours of operation for the public from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday uh, to 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. seven days a week. And also an increase in the hours of operation for the operator and contract staff from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. seven days a week to 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. seven days a week. Construction of a new building for receiving and loading recycling and municipal solid waste materials. Conversion of the existing public receiving area building to serve as the organics receiving and transfer building. Construction of ancillary areas for the receipt and processing of green materials and construction and demolition materials. There'll also be an expansion of the site entrance and installation of new scales for the facility. And there also lastly, there'll be updates to the report of facility information. With regards to emergency waivers, the department did not receive any new emergency waivers since the January public meeting uh, last month. Back to you, Linda. Thank you, Paulina. Before we open up to public comments this morning, we'd like to remind everyone that you can find more information on each of the agenda items we discussed today by visiting the CalRecycle homepage, selecting public meetings, and then clicking on today's date to download the meeting agenda. Now let's send it over to Maria and Zoe to address the public comments this morning. Thank you so much, Linda. So for public comments this morning, I will start out with a fun comment that we had from my presentation. And the question does not include a name or organization, but the question is, does CalRecycle have a TikTok account so that those who are interested can create a video with the iRecycle Smart Jingle? No, we actually don't have a TikTok account at this time, but we are expecting some influencers to start that process sometime in the next two to three weeks. So uh, look out for that and uh, we will let you know if we're able to have a TikTok account sometime soon. Thanks, Maria. I'll go ahead and read the next question um, and I'll invite 
our assistant director of the beverage container recycling program, Amy Cameron, to, um, to respond. I'll go ahead and read the comment. A recycling facility near where I live imposed a 50 plastic container maximum for receiving full CRV. After 50, the pay is cut, I think, by half and is done by weight. This seems somewhat contradictory to the purpose of recycling because it requires those who want full value to go every day instead of once a week, which means a huge increase in the use of automobile trips and the consumption of gasoline or electricity. What can be done about this policy? Why is it even allowed? I think all consumers who have been victimized and those who don't know about the 50 container limit or can't afford to show up every day should get refunds for all of the lost revenue, signed Alessandro Maki. Hi, thank you. First and foremost, I wanna thank you for taking the time to share your experience as a consumer and your thoughts on what is working for you. Based on the example you shared, the Recycling Center is working under the current regulations. Under CCR section 2535, the consumer has the option of being paid based on count for up to 50 empty beverage containers of each material type. A recycling center may choose to pay by count for more than 50 containers, but it is not required to do so. Recycling centers may pay based on the weight to reduce the time to complete a transaction. The minimum reimbursement rates rates are based on an ongoing statewide survey of beverage containers received at recycling centers. Samples are collected throughout the year from all regions of the state and the container sample represent the total of containers redeemed in California. Each year, the beverage container recycling program publishes the report changes to recycling rates, including refund value per segregated pound, refund value per commingled pound and containers per segregated pound for each type of California's recycling program. I have your email address and will send you the 2022 rates. Should you find that your recycling center may not be using the latest rates, please let us know at complaints at calrecycle.ca.gov and we can follow up to ensure the recycling center is properly educated. Again, I will send you those rates, and if you have any other follow-up, please do not hesitate to respond by email to me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Amy. And I will turn it over to um, Maria to read our next comment. Our next comment comes from the City of Sunnydale Solid Waste Division. And the comment is, thank you so much, grant staff. Your assistance throughout the approval process is very much appreciated. Thanks, Maria. And yes, a big thank you to um, our, our whole grants team at CalRecycle. Um, it's been an incredible effort so far and even more to come. So um, with that, we don't have any more public comments in, in our queue. Um, so I'll turn it back over to Maria. Thank you so much. And I will pass it along to Linda. Okay, another thanks this time to everyone who participated in the public meeting today. We hope that you enjoy the new format designed to make communication accessible, inclusive, and as rele relevant as possible. And we do welcome your feedback. So feel free to leave us a comment on the public comment portal. In the meantime, have a great rest of your morning and week, and we'll see you back again next month. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>